This week's laptop is a Dell Latitude 7520. I bought this second hand. As you can see, it is described as being faulty. So this is the motherboard here. What I'm gonna try and do is power it on. I've got a USB-C plugged in. I've got HDMI plugged in. I'm gonna power it on and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so let's try and power it on. So I'm pressing the power button. Oh, and as you can see, a light has come on on the other side. Now I need to keep it on this side because I want to apply a heat sink to it here just to make sure that it doesn't overheat. So let's see if we get anything on the screen. Okay, so the light is still on, but nothing on the screen so far. I hear some sort of noises, but we're not getting anything on the screen at all. No. We still have a light on the front, but there's just nothing happening. I'm not getting anything on the display at all. And the processor is heating up because I can feel the heat coming through to the heatsink. Okay, and it's actually shut itself off. I'm going to wait a few seconds and see if it tries to come back on again. Okay, I tried powering it on a number of times, but it keeps doing the same thing. The light comes on, the processor appears to heat up, there's no display, and then it shuts off. I power it on, it does the same thing again. So it's a repeating pattern. So what I've done is I've scanned the motherboard to the screen, as you can see here, and we're going to have a look around and do some troubleshooting. So what do we know up to this point? Well, we know that it's most likely that our PD controller IC is working and our battery management IC because the 3.3 volts and the voltage for the processor are derived from our main VSYS power rail and that won't be available unless the PD controller and the battery management IC are both working. So what I need to try next is see how many of those secondary power rails are working. Now where we measure those is at these inductors here. So I'm going to take down the measurements for each of these inductors and see if there's any indication of any of the voltages being wrong or any indication of any of these inductors being shorted. So let's do that now. So with all power disconnected to the motherboard and my multimeter in diode mode, I place my red probe to ground and we're going to start taking some measurements. So what I'm looking for here is to see if there's a short at any of those secondary inductors starting at PL501. So I can place my black probe to either side of the inductor. Um, I'm going to place it to this side and what I find is it measures 0 0.140. So that seems okay. Next we're going to measure at PL101. So again placing my black probe to one side of that inductor I find that it measures 0.387. Next we're going to measure PL201. So I place my black probe to one side of that inductor and I find it measures 0.019. That seems a little low but we're going to come back to it. Next we're going to measure at these three inductors right here starting with this one which is PL701. So at PL701 I am measuring 0.469. So that's okay. Next we're going to take a diode mode reading at PL603, you can see it marked here. I place my probe to the inductor and I find that it measures 0 0.033. And the last of these three inductors is this one here which is PL100. So we take a measurement right here and I find out that that measures 0 0.357. And the last measurement we need to take in diode mode is PL602 right here. So I place my probe to one side of that inductor and I find that it measures 0 0.033. So what do we think of those values? Well the first thing we can say is that there's definitely not a dead short on any of the secondary power rails. There's nothing like the 0, 0.000 that we found on one of the inductors on last week's video. The lowest that we have is this one down here, which is 0 0.019. Now this does seem low. It's lower than what the values are for the processor.
So I'm not sure what this is, but the one thing we have confirmed here is that there's certainly not a dead short on any of these secondary power rails. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the laptop to power again. I'm going to press the power button to power it on and I'm going to take the voltage measurements at each of those secondary inductors. So with my laptop fully plugged in, I've pressed the power button on and we're going to take some voltage measurements now. So as you can see, my multimeter is in volts in the 20 volt range. I place my black probe to ground and we're going to take the measurements with a red probe. So starting up in the top left at PL501, the voltage measurement I take there is 1.80 volts. At PL101, I measure 5.14 volts. At PL201, which is this inductor right here, I take a voltage measurement of 1.10 volts. Now you may remember when we measured in diode mode, I was a little concerned about the reading here, but it's actually measuring 1.1 volts, which is correct. This is for the RAM voltage. The next one we're going to measure is the voltage at PL701. So I place my red probe to the inductor here and I find it measures 8.68 volts. Next we have PL603. And when I measure at PL603, I find it's 1.80 volts. Right beside PL603, we have PL100. And the voltage reading at PL100 is 3.30 volts. And the last measurement I want to take is at PL602. And at PL602, we are measuring 1.80 volts. So it looks like all of our voltages are online. So all of our secondary voltages appear to be online, but yet it's not displaying anything. So what could the problem be? Now, one thing I did notice at the start was that there seemed to be a bit of fluff around this connection here. I'm not exactly sure what this is for, but as I looked a bit closer at it, it looked as though some of the pins were connecting. So let me go out to the microscope just to show you what I found. So when I looked more closely at the connector, I could see that there was a couple of pins that seemed to be crossing over each other. See it in the top right? So I got at it with my tweezers. This is actually sped up to three times the speed. But I used my tweezers to separate these from each other. And then I got some sellotape just to take away the last of the fibers that were caught in the pins. But the main thing I wanted to do here was just to make sure that there were no pins crossing. After separating those pins and cleaning up that connection port, I plugged the laptop motherboard in again, connected it to the HDMI monitor, and this time it started giving us a display. So it was literally just the crossed pins on that connection port that were stopping this laptop from booting. Now the reason I don't have footage of this powering on is because after I'd got it working again, I was going over the voltages to check them and I somehow managed to cross two of the pins beside the power management IC and I think I've blown that. So that's a lesson to me to take the recordings before going back over the board to confirm any measurements. Um, one of the difficulties I have with making the videos is I'm short on time. And when I start to rush stuff, I make mistakes. There's a number of videos that I couldn't put up because I made mistakes in doing them simply because I'm rushing. I may change to doing one video every two weeks instead because I think it will help improve the quality and put less pressure on me at the weekends to get them done. But I'll see how it goes. Tell me how, what you think about the video and put any comments down below. Any comments and suggestions are always welcome of course and I'll speak to you again next week.